What's up everyone, Tom here with another video. Today we'll be talking about the worst month historically for the stock market since 1928. Market participation is at all time highs. Money is seemingly coming out of thin air and price action and sentiment are strong. So will the weakest month of the year on average actually show any weakness? Let's try to break it down together to find out what's next for the markets. Stay tuned. So the best place to start is to talk about sentiment in the markets. We've covered that a little bit on this channel. Throughout this video, we're going to be looking at some of the early indicators that can show us whether the stock market's about to tip over and they won't be exactly what you're thinking. And on top of that, we'll be talking about the current movements that we've got from a technical analysis perspective on the markets, along with some fundamental analysis currently right now. We'll start with Tesla because I think that really shows the current sentiment of the markets. Tesla and Apple are retail investors favorites. In fact, many people viewing, maybe yourself right now, own these shares. And well done to you. Obviously every week, Tesla and Apple continue to climb and the stock split has done very well for many investors out there. But the thing is that this is the sentiment when we go away from fundamentals and we go into trading and trying to profit off those moves. In fact, investors are actually changing their Tesla style of trades. Instead of using potentially just a bought call, they're using spreads or other types of investment tools to try to risk mitigate potential downside in these investments. Another thing that we can look at is, of course, the current sentiment of the markets. And we've covered this a lot in this channel. I'm not going to go too deeply into this throughout this video. I want to look at facts, stats, and early indicators. One of those is, of course, fear and greed over time. And we're starting to nudge up higher coming into what is the weakest month being September on record. So here we have almost an 80 reading of the fear and greed index over time. This is made up of a whole bunch of different things that we'll talk about today throughout this video. From a 12 month perspective, the S&P 500 has performed amazingly well in terms of how it's dealt with this crisis. Not all indices around the world are the same. In Australia, where I'm from, our market has never recovered back to all time highs and is fact showing weakness right now just after earnings season. Now that's a stark difference from of course the American markets and that's because the American markets have tech and tech has been the standout. If we look at the FANG stocks, they've performed incredibly well. And what we've seen during this crisis is basically a speed up of the way that we were already transitioning to, which is more of an internet-based economy and more of an internet-based business structure. So it comes as no surprise that tech has done well and that has certainly led the market. And in fact, it's led the market so much that we now have a 27% capitalization of the S&P 500 in the top six stocks. So that's Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Microsoft, and Google. So these stocks now make up 27%, and this is historically the highest point since the 1960s. Does that matter in terms of breadth right now? Well, we're starting to see a bit of a pickup on the second market as in the smaller stocks, but that is what is primarily leading this market. And if they're overbought or something's going on with them, we do need to be concerned. So why do I say September is the weakest month? Well, here we have some data from 1928 to 2020. And many people would have been talking about the sell and may and go away. And of course this year it did not happen. But historically, sell and may and go away is only a slightly negative month. What is more glaring is the weakness that we usually see in the markets September into October. Usually these months are the weakest months of the year in the market on average over a very long period of time. So we obviously have a few things going on in the market right now. We have the Federal Reserve put or the fiscal policy that's currently underpinning the markets. And of course, we also have the election year. So how does the market generally return over that period? Well, here, of course, we've got the general crisis years in terms of percent changes per year. And this year we're already positive. So we've bucked this particular historical trend. What is interesting though, that if we look at September's in presidential election years, they've actually been slightly positive overall and then slight negativity as we get closer to the election as in October and November. Now we'll note that in that previous slide when we we're talking about 1928, 2020, while September was the weakest month, October definitely wasn't a very strong month. 
So in the next couple of months, we should see a small pullback in the market. Now that doesn't mean we're going to see a massive pullback. And why is this? Well, when we look at what happens when a market, especially the American market, makes all time highs, we can see that generally the market, when it makes an all time high, will actually gain 9.2% over the next 12 months. And that seems to be set again, considering the fiscal policy around the world and several other key factors in the markets right now. What I think though should be most interesting to every trader out there or investor is currently the early indicators that we're seeing in the markets. So one of those is the VIX or volatility index. We saw the VIX spike a little bit last week off Jerome Powell's speech. We saw volatility come back into the markets if only for a couple of hours. Obviously, there's some shakiness going on from current valuations, and I'm sure Wall Street would like to buy some stocks at cheaper valuations and flush out a few of us, the retail traders. Now, VIX is actually increasing while we have the stock market increasing as well, and that's actually a bit rare. Usually, you do not see the VIX increasing while the stock market is basically going up as well, and the VIX now is sitting at around 26 and a half, and this is an early indicator that there is some fear in the market. What are other indicators though that there is fear in the market or potential stability in the market? Well, one of the other ones is of course to look at silver and look at gold, traditional hedges against the market. Bitcoin as well and other cryptos are all moving up. In fact, they're breaking out of their blow off structure that we talked about a few weeks ago and we're starting to see new kind of highs and resistances get tested. Gold's moving towards the 2000. Silver just broke out above this 2830 and had nice form of structure below here. And if it breaks out above this, obviously 2916, if we have a look on a monthly, silver has predominantly done very, very well out of crises as well. And this is a hedge against obviously uncertainty, but at the same time, silver is particularly used in a lot of rebuilds. So we can see over here on the monthly what happened to silver over time. The metal I like to look at though most as a precursor of concerns in the market is probably copper though. Copper is often referred to as Dr. Copper. And why is that? Well, Dr. Copper can sometimes predominantly show whether there is weakness in the economies or concerns over economic growth. We'll notice over here on the daily that around the 15th of January, when we first found out about this current crisis, we saw copper have a sharp decline. And this actually precursed the market itself. We also saw that copper then continued to fall and the rebound started to occur on copper at the same time that the S&P 500 was recovering as well. Now copper has a nice structure formation at around this $3 resistance and it just broke out above that resistance. So if copper does turn around, one of the kind of things that you might see is copper strength copper weakness and then copper finding a base at around the three dollars where previous resistances will act as support and this would be kind of the sign that you'd be looking at potentially the dip on the s p 500. remember september historically only loses one percent for the markets so while this year if the markets do fall over it would be a lot more because of the nature of the momentum each way we're not necessarily seeing a crash here all we're seeing is a dip before the election and of course before then we find out more which will help us to identify what's going to happen over the next 12 months. So copper is something that you should have on your charts and you should look at if you're a longer term investor or trader. So what about the S&P 500 overall? Well the breadth as we saw 27% of the S&P 500 is now made up of six companies. But on top of that, we now are hitting certain key technicals that have acted as resistance. And this is coming into the September month. So one of the key ones is that we have seen a trend line across the board since 2018 and even further back if we extrapolate that out, where every time it's hit this trend line, it's found resistance. And we're just starting to see a little bit of weakness in the S&P 500 overall. To compound that a little bit more, if we actually break this down into a daily, we would see here that we've just had the monthly pivots open and we've got an R1 at around 35.94 and we've got the central pivot, a point that the market often does like to come back and test previously, like just over here and over here, at just around the previous all time highs, so around that 34 kind of 100 zone. And when we see the proper stock market open today, we'll have the pivots for the S&P 500. Remember, this is the futures. So whenever you're looking at pivots, 
make sure to set pivots for the real stock market during the real time. And that would be the SPX in terms of codes. So with the NASDAQ above 12,000, above the key psychological, with the S&P 500 hitting a special line, and with copper currently showing bullish, are we really going to look at shorts? Well, no, I don't think it's very easy to, to short a market that is obviously incredibly strong and incredibly momentum driven. But that doesn't mean that there won't be smaller dips and September could be an opportunity into October for somebody looking at average or dollar cost averaging into their investments. In fact, insiders have become a lot less optimistic recently on their shares. And we can see here that the 10 year average, which is around this kind of 27 area, has now been declined from. People are not buying their own shares inside their companies. And this is CEOs and other people in the businesses. Obviously, they started net selling those positions, and that's because maybe they don't feel their companies are worth that much. They're taking profit, keeping it, and no doubtly investing that later. So when we see insiders becoming a lot less optimistic, we do need to pay attention as this is a good indicator of whether the markets are overpriced or not, because who would know better than the people running the businesses themselves? This number is almost down now to the 20s, and it hasn't always historically been the best indicator for the markets, but with the VIX rising, gold and silver breaking out, cryptocurrencies moving up, all hedges against, of course, uncertainty, and of course, if we see copper start to decline, that could be precursor warnings that you can use to make decisions on whether you're interested in potentially getting out of the stock market or potentially finding dip levels. So if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to subscribe and of course hit that like button. We do a series of live streams every Monday open bell and non-farm payrolls, so make sure to check those out. And of course, we'll be coming at you with the latest stock market technical analysis content, talking about anything that's stock market related and trading related in general. Bye for now and good luck this month, everyone.